betrayed by blood, my in-law's greed, and my husband's hand. Lisa had always believed she'd found her happily ever after when she married Mark. He was charming, supportive, and kind, everything she'd hoped for in a husband. His family, however, was a different story. From the moment she met her mother-in-law, Joan, and her sister-in-law, Kelly, Lisa felt their cold, calculating stares. They smiled on the surface, but their actions were filled with subtle hostility. Mark often dismissed Lisa's concerns about their behavior, saying they were just protective of him. So Lisa brushed it aside and focused on building her new life. She thought that with time, they'd warm up to her, but that day never came. Despite the chilly relations with Joan and Kelly, Lisa focused on her own family and the love she had for her parents. Her parents had raised her in a modest but beautiful home, a home filled with memories of her childhood, of Sunday dinners and family gatherings. When they retired and moved to a quiet coastal town, they left the house in Lisa's care, trusting her to protect the family legacy. It was a responsibility she cherished. Chapter 2. The Pressure Mounts Not long after the wedding, Joan and Kelly started showing a curious interest in Lisa's family home. During one particularly tense dinner, Joan brought it up under the guise of concern. You know, Lisa, that house must be hard to manage while your parents are away. It's such a burden for someone as busy as you, Joan said, her voice oozing with false sweetness. Mark and I could help out, you know. We have contacts who could manage it for you. Lisa smiled politely, trying to hide her discomfort. Thanks, Joan, but it's not a burden. It's my parents' home, and I'm happy to take care of it. Kelly chimed in with her usual disdainful tone. But, you know, houses can lose value if they aren't properly looked after. We're just trying to help. You wouldn't want that place to go to waste, would you? Lisa's stomach twisted at the suggestion. The house meant everything to her and her parents. The idea of Joan and Kelly getting their hands on it felt like a violation. I appreciate the offer, Lisa said firmly, but I've got it under control. Mark remained quiet during the exchange, glancing nervously between his wife and his mother. He didn't intervene, and that silence felt like a small betrayal to Lisa. Chapter 3. Joan's Manipulation Joan wasn't one to give up easily. Over the next few weeks, she subtly but steadily increased her pressure. She started visiting the house unannounced, just checking in, as she put it, making comments about how much maintenance it needed and how they could use the proceeds from selling it for something more practical. Then came the day Joan laid out her true plan. We should sell the house, Lisa. With the money, we can invest in a new property, a better one that benefits all of us. Mark and I have been talking, and we agree it's the smart move. Lisa's heart dropped. She couldn't believe what she was hearing. They had already discussed it without her, without even considering how she felt about her parents' home. It's not just a house, Joan, Lisa said, her voice steady despite the anger bubbling inside. It's my family's legacy. My parents worked hard for that home, and I'm not going to sell it. Joan's expression darkened. You're being selfish, Lisa. This isn't just about you anymore. We're family, and families make sacrifices for the greater good. The word family felt like a weapon in Joan's mouth, and Lisa could see the manipulation behind her eyes. But what shocked her even more was that Mark, her husband, didn't say a word in her defense. Chapter 4 The Breaking Point Things escalated quickly after that. Joan and Kelly ramped up their efforts, suggesting they were looking out for Lisa's best interest when, in reality, they were looking to line their own pockets. Lisa felt cornered, and worst of all, Mark seemed to be siding with them more and more. One evening, after a particularly heated argument between Lisa and his mother, Mark confronted Lisa in the privacy of their bedroom. His face was flushed with anger, and his words were sharp. "'Why can't you just listen to reason?' he snapped. This house is causing nothing but problems. My mom is right. Selling it is the smart thing to do. Lisa's eyes widened in disbelief. Mark, this is my parents' home. It's not just a piece of property to sell off. I can't believe you're even considering this. It's not just your decision. 
Mark shot back, his voice rising. You always act like you're the only one who matters in this marriage. Before Lisa could respond, Mark did something she never expected. In a moment of rage, he slapped her across the face. Lisa stumbled back, stunned. The room went silent except for the sound of her ragged breathing. Tears welled up in her eyes as she touched her cheek, the pain of the hit, nothing compared to the betrayal. She felt in her heart. Mark's expression changed immediately, shock and regret flashing across his face. Lisa, I... But Lisa didn't wait to hear the apology. She turned and walked out of the bedroom, grabbed her keys, and left the house without looking back. Chapter 5 A New Beginning Lisa drove for hours, her face streaked with tears, until she found herself parked in front of her parents' house, the place that felt like home, the one place she knew she could find peace. She spent the night there, alone with her thoughts, trying to come to terms with the reality of her marriage and the people she had trusted. The next day, Lisa called a lawyer. She knew now that there was no saving her relationship with Mark. His mother and sister had poisoned it beyond repair, and Mark had made his choice. But Lisa wasn't going to let them take everything from her. Through legal channels, she ensured that the house remained in her name, protected from any claims Joan and Kelly might make. It wasn't easy. Joan tried to manipulate Mark into contesting it, but Lisa stood firm. She had learned the hard way that she had to protect herself and her family's legacy. In the months that followed, Lisa filed for divorce. Mark pleaded with her to reconsider, apologizing profusely for what had happened, but Lisa's trust was shattered. The man she had loved had allowed his family's greed to destroy their marriage. Chapter 6 Closure and Strength The divorce was finalized quietly, and Lisa moved forward with her life. She focused on rebuilding herself, finding strength in her independence and the love of her parents. They had always taught her to stand up for what was right, and now she knew she had done just that. As for Joan and Kelly, they disappeared from her life, their plans to steal the house foiled. Lisa heard through mutual acquaintances that their financial situation had worsened, but she didn't care anymore. They had no place in her future. In time, Lisa found peace. She didn't regret the love she had given Mark, but she had learned an invaluable lesson. Never let anyone, no matter how close, take away what truly matters to you. When Lisa marries Mark, she believes she's stepping into a loving family. But beneath the surface, her mother-in-law and sister-in-law harbor dark intentions. As they plot to steal Lisa's parents' house, tensions rise, pushing her marriage to its breaking point. Caught between loyalty to her family's legacy and her husband's growing coldness, Lisa faces a devastating betrayal. When Mark strikes her in a moment of rage, Lisa realizes she must fight not only for her family's home, but also for her own freedom. Will she reclaim what is hers, or lose everything to greed and manipulation?